Down by Law, John Lurie, Tom Waits, and Mr. Benini. How do you get those three together? Well, I was writing, a, I was sketching out a story for Tom Waits and John Lurie, both of whom I, I knew. And I just thought, and I'd worked with John, I'd not worked with Tom, but I just thought, ah, I want to write something for these two guys. So I was sketching out a story, but there was some element missing. I don't know. I wasn't sure yet. It was very early stage. Then I came to Italy to a film festival in Salso Maggiore, where I was on a jury with just five people. And one of the other jury members was Roberto. Um, and in fact, I only came to this festival because a friend, um, uh, a friend had died, Enzo Ungari, and who I knew already. And he was, his wife was also knew Roberto, I guess. And somehow she worked for the festival. And Marika, she's Dutch. And she called me and said, please come and be on the festival and we can all see a lot of friends together. So I went there and uh, I met this guy on the jury the first day, Roberto. I had never heard of him. I didn't know who he was. Somehow we, we were sort of the, the bad kids in the jury. We were the ones that the director of the festival would find smoking cigarettes in the alley while the film we were supposed to be watching was being shown. And somehow we became, and we talked in broken French because Roberto didn't speak English and I spoke no Italian. And we both spoke flawed French. So we had these endless conversations in French about everything, about philosophers and painters, poets, about movies, about music, about friends that we knew. And, and we just kind of bonded over this, I don't know, one week period. And so after the festival was over, I came to Rome and I wrote a treatment for, based on the ideas I'd collected for Tom Waits and John Lurie, inc including Roberto. And I wrote it actually at Enzo's desk um, in Rome. And there was a picture of him there. I don't know, it was like he was guiding me in a way. And I wrote it very fast in, I don't know, in three or four days, five days. I wrote a 20 page, 25 page uh, outline of this story. Then I gave it to Roberto. Someone helped him translate it or translated it for him verbally. Um, I asked him, Roberto, you know, what do you think of this story? I have this idea. And he said he wanted to do it. So I went back to New York and started preparing the film. And that's how the three of them got roped together. Did they get on? Yes, they, they did. They were still all close friends. Why? I mean, is it just a coincidence that you had the two musicians and an Italian comedian? I mean, well, I mean, just staying with the two musicians for a second. I mean, you knew John Lurie from before, you knew Tom Waits. How did you meet Tom Waits, for that matter? I met Tom Waits in the early 80s in New York because he, he's, you know, lives, he's a California guy, grew up in L.A. And, uh, and still lives there. But there was a period where he moved to New York. And just through the kind of, I don't know, music scene or hanging out, I ran into him a few times. Actually, the first time we were introduced was uh, at a party a friend of mine, uh, the painter Jean-Michel Basquiat, had. And uh, Tom was there. And I was like, that's Tom Waits. You know? And I just started talking to him. And I remember that night, Tom and I ended up going to different bars and clubs the whole night and going home when it was light out. And from that, after that evening, we, we, we just were friends. you know. And I was a big fan of Tom's anyway, which was kind of hard, you know, but then you meet him and he's, you see the real person. He was even more interesting to me in, in some ways. So, uh, I, you know, those two guys, it, it was, you know, back then I was writing and I still often write for people I already know because there are parts of their personality that I want to put into a character. And, and have them play that. Of course, they're not playing themselves. That's the thing that used to bother me in the early days, even Stranger Than Paradise. People said, well, is John Lurie just playing himself? Well, no, he wasn't, but, but the character contained parts of himself, you know? So I still kind of operate that way. But uh, it, it, it also wasn't a conscious thing. I've worked with a lot of musicians, and it's not because I go out thinking, what musicians could I work with? 
It's just people that I know that I think would be good in a role. So I've worked with, you know, Joe Strummer and Screamin' Jay Hawkins and other people that are also musicians, Iggy Pop and different people. But all of those were people I, I knew before I wrote something for them. I mean, I knew them personally, so it was something in their personality I was trying to take and, and put part of that in a character and have them, you know, suppress other parts of their personality.